Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at oscillators. Now they're a fundamental building block uh, of electronic circuits. Uh, quite often when I use an oscillator I simply get the waveform from a signal generator but not always. Um, we've certainly used um, several different means of, of producing a signal in the past on videos that you've hopefully had a look at. If not, suggest you do. Um, you might find some useful information there. But I sat down with a sheet of paper and started writing out um, oscillators that I could think of and pretty much filled the page. So there's certainly subject matter here for more than one video, more than two videos, I'd say at least three, but um, don't hold me to that, it might even be more than that. But we're going to start with the simplest that I can think of. Um, we're going to look at a couple of oscillators that produce square waves today. Uh, the first one is one that you can simply buy in a can ready-made and the second one uses just just three components uh, to produce its output. So without further ado, let's go to the bench and take a look at the first one. Okay, so first up then on the oscillator front, um, doesn't re really require a circuit diagram, it's uh, one of these things. It's an MCO uh, 1510, in this case the A version, which is um, a self-contained uh, clock oscillator, I say clock oscillator, that, that's the kind of thing they usually use for. Um, this one it produces a square wave output, they come at various frequencies, this one's a 4 megahertz one. An absolute doddle to set up, um, positive supply to one of the pins, uh, ground to the other pin and output from the uh, third pin here. There's a fourth pin that's not connected, so don't try and use that as a ground because you get a very strange looking output. The negative connection and the ground share the same. Um, so uh, we'll look at um, the output in a moment but these couldn't uh, be easier to use um, and if I just pull that out the board you can hopefully see there um, I've just marked on what the connections are. Um, we've got negative, uh, positive, that's supply voltages, that's also ground and uh, the output on that pin there. Um, so very straightforward piece of kit to use. Let's have a look at the, um, the grabs of the scope and the spectrum analyzer from this particular chip, uh, which has been um, sitting here just running on this on this breadboard. Okay, here's a grab of the oscilloscope screen then for the uh, output of the oscillator. Um, and you can see nice, uh, nice square wave. A little bit of ringing on that uh, top left-hand corner, well, and also the bottom right-hand corner for that matter. That's probably partly a result of the fact that I'm running something at four megahertz on a on a breadboard with a, with a few leads. That probably improve on a in a proper circuit application. Um, but uh, the uh, stated rise time in the spec for an A model of this chip is five nanoseconds and you can see from the table there uh, we're getting about um, just over three and a half, three and three quarter, uh, so three and a half, just over three and a half for rise time and three and three quarter for the fall time so it's well within that spec um, and the the frequency itself uh, let's just have a look what the spectrum analyzer makes of it. Uh, this is the spectrum analyzer had been on for about 35 minutes before I took this measurement so um, hopefully it's a reasonably sensible answer. Um, it's at uh, 21 um, hertz above the above 4 megahertz and uh, the stated spec is plus or minus 25 parts per million um, so that's uh, that's within spec. So hopping back to the waveform for a minute, with those sharp corners on, as you might expect, uh, the output of this um, this kind of thing is going to be, um, how shall we say, rich in harmonics. Um, nothing to see there, obviously, from the fundamental on a very um, narrow span of the spectrum. But if we look at uh, the spectrum up to 500 megahertz, you can see there's a, a rich pattern of harmonics there that um, extend um, certainly above you know, 450 megahertz um, but that, oh, they obviously have tailed off quite considerably above about two or three hundred megs but they are there nonetheless. Um, not surprising with such a sharp corner if you're not um, familiar um, square waves are always 
rich in harmonics because of the sharp corners. If you are familiar, just ignore this bit. I don't wish to teach anyone to suck eggs. Um, there's advantages and disadvantages to this. Um, the disadvantage, of course, is that to prevent spurious emissions, you need to make sure whatever you're using this for is, is well shielded or has been sufficiently well designed to keep those harmonics in check. Um, however, if you're wanting a, a higher frequency from a 4 MHz crystal, there's certainly plenty on offer here, and using a, a filter in the right place would, would uh, um, produce you a multiple of these frequencies, um, which uh, is a potential use. So just looking um, closely at what we get. Uh, so marker 1 there is on uh, the fundamental, um, and according to the table there it's saying about just over 4 megs. Uh, marker 2, the second harmonic, um, is uh, 40, 40 odd dB down, but the third harmonic again is, is much stronger, it's about 3 dB down on the, on the fundamental, so the, certainly the, um, the odd harmonics are, are pretty strong. So there's a potential use for that, so um, this is your usual double-edged sword with harmonics, you might be able to make use of them. So that's the first oscillator, um, couldn't be more straightforward, um, you just buy one and plug it in. So let's move on to some other sorts now. Okay, so following on from uh, a really straightforward uh, oscillator in a can, so to speak, um, I thought we'd stick with a square of output, the kind of thing you might use to produce a clock. Now we have uh, looked at these before on previous videos, uh, but this one is uh, using a Schmidt trigger knot gate to produce a, a square wave output and the charge discharge rate of the capacitor and the value of the resistor uh, both between them determine the frequency of the output. So before we look at it on the bench the chip I'm just going to use for this is a CMOS hex Schmidt trigger and I'm just going to use uh, the bottom left hand gate and I'm going to pretend the other ones aren't there. So let's hop to the bench and see what that looks like. Here's that circuit you've just been looking at on the breadboard then. Um, it's incredibly straightforward. We've got a 4010 uh, hex Schmidt trigger here. Uh, power supply positive and negative there in the normal way you get with the, these dip packages. Uh, here's the resistor between the input and the output of the uh, NOT gate. I'm just using the first gate, I'm ignoring the rest. and. For those of you who want to tell me that I should have all the other inputs uh, tied low, I know, I just couldn't be bothered. Uh, and then we've got a capacitor between the input uh, going down to ground here. So we've got 100k and we've got 100 nanofarads. Now we'll look at the uh, frequency output on the screen grabs in a moment because obviously changing these values will give you a different frequency um, depending on uh, what your needs are from the oscillator. Uh, but I've got the output just taken on this purple wire here. However, if we put the scope onto the input of the gate, we get a very different waveform, which is this one. And that waveform effectively is the charge-discharge cycle of the capacitor that you're using. Um, and obviously, once you get to the output side of the gate, because it's a Schmidt trigger, it flips between on and off, because that's what Schmidt triggers do. I've covered this in previous videos, so if you want to have a look at that, you can. Right, there we go. Let's have a look at the um, the frequency uh, grabs of these output of the this chip with uh, a number of different capacitors and resistors. Okay, here's the output then from the circuit uh, that you've just seen with the 100 nanofarad capacitor and the 100k resistor. Uh, the scope reckons it's about 172 hertz, something like that, and you can see it's a uh, reasonably good approximation of a, of a square wave and if we change the values so um, if I change from a 100 nanofarad to a 300 nanofarad capacitor uh, we're now down to just about uh, 50 Hertz so that's obviously takes a little bit longer to to charge and discharge slightly higher value so you get uh, a lower frequency you can see it works that way and then if we go back to um, 100 nanofarad capacitor but up the resistor from 100k to 1 meg uh, we get this square wave that looks a lot squarer but if you look top right there the frequency is actually just over 14 hertz so you can get quite a, a, a low frequency with a, a reasonably shaped wave 
and then finally if we uh, just look if we move the scope probe onto the uh, input side of the gate we get a waveform that looks something like this and what you're effectively seeing there is the charge and discharge of the capacitor uh, as I mentioned before and obviously that gets translated into a square wave uh, like so uh, because of the um, effect of the Schmidt trigger circuit. Okay there you go that's um, uh, the second oscillator. Okay well there you have the first two of the many oscillators, not quite sure how many yet, um, but at this stage we've just been producing square waves and I think it's just important to make the point that yeah you were looking at waves on the oscilloscope there but in the case uh, of both these uh, two uh, oscillators what was being produced was actually square wave pulses there was nothing going below the line so to speak um, it was going from zero to plus about five volts in this case so we weren't actually um, producing a waveform that went uh, went below the line uh, we'll come on to that much later so I hope that's been useful thanks very much for watching as all YouTubers will tell you, if you click on the like, if you click subscribe uh, or even the notification button, uh, it really helps the channel. More people get to see it uh, and that would be absolutely great. Thanks very much for watching. Look forward to seeing you on part two.